our idea was very simple. If you can identify where people make mistakes um, and you can help eliminate those mistakes, well, by default, you'll be more profitable. Mm. You, you, if you're going to lose money, you're still going to lose money. You're going to just lose less. So what I don't believe in is I don't believe there's a holy grail. Welcome back everyone, I'm Sian Tuzi at the offices of Vaxitrader in Sydney with Michael Berman. How's it going, Michael? Thank you yourself, nice to meet you. Very good, very good. Thank you for welcoming me here. It's a beautiful view we have on the whole Sydney, which I really love. The view is always the best about these offices at the top floor. That's awesome. So, Michael, tell me a little bit about yourself, what you do, just a bit of background so people know who you are. Sure. Um, Etienne, I've been trading for more than 15 years. I started trading a hedge fund. Well, firstly, I started an investment bank as a prop trader. And and then from there, I progressed and, and set up a fund and was running a fund. And that was back in South Africa. And I, I moved here 11 years ago to Australia. And I once again started trading some proprietary capital for some high net worth individuals. And along the way, in 2012, uh, my partner and I decided to set up an emerging manager platform where we wanted to, the company was called Rapper, stood for Risk and Profit Analyzer, and the idea was that we would incubate, take the experience that we had built up over the years of trading ourselves and incubate other traders. And Rapper took on another form, it was eventually merged and bought out by another, by an American firm and my partner Vlad and myself were left to do our own thing and in 2016 we came up with Cyprasian and uh, I can talk a little bit about, I'm sure we'll talk a lot about yeah. Cyprasian. Yeah, that's very interesting by the way, which uh, I just wanted to do, yeah. Yeah, so, so we, we, are, we are traders, first and foremost, not just academics or, or salesmen. Our first love is trading and um, I know how hard it is and I know what it's like to eat what you kill effectively which is trading you, you, you know you're only gonna you're only gonna eat well if you make profits so yeah. from I think we bring a lot of that into what we do at Cyquasia now so I want to go back in time a little bit and what was that first experience where you were trading did you start on your own did you start with a fund you said you were for a prop firm yeah, did. how did that happen exactly that's a good it's an interesting question so it actually goes back a long way um, I, I started trading with my bar mitzvah money so as a Jewish boy you become a man at 13 and typically you have a big party and re receive money uh, and so with that money I start my mother was my father's a businessman and he wasn't so interested in the stock market but my mother was and and I remember I bought my at age 13 I bought my first share stock was a manganese mine and kind of from there I was always trading on and off doing doing a little bit of this and a bit of that but certainly no no particular um, the uh, style it was it was reading the newspaper I was one of those cu curious people I studied the newspaper from cover to cover and thought I knew something about the markets nice and how did that evolve to you being in a prop firm so yeah so how, how it happened was uh, my career post university was in commercial real estate I was an asset manager and a, and a developer and and I was really enjoying a great career in, in the space. And, and, but we were part of a public company. And then I started, I started wondering, how will we do as a public company in a, a market downturn? Because at the end of the day, property is cyclical, it's interest rate dependent, and interest rates go up and they go down. Um, they do that in longer cycles. But I, I was trying to figure out a way how we could make money in any market condition. And that's when I became aware of um, shorting and all that kind of stuff. So I, I made a pitch to the executive board at this investment bank I was working at and said, look, I've got these ideas and all this kind of stuff. They said, go do some research and put a board paper together, which I did, like a business plan. and. Um, I never looked back. I basically, um, they said, okay, we'll set you up and we'll you know, give you some capital with 
risk metrics and suddenly I was on the trading floor with guys trading S&P futures and options and all this kind of stuff. I knew very little. Um, I just knew my thing. Like uh, I'm, I'm quite a intuitive type of person and some people argue that, that that's like a, an excuse for not having a system. But um, yeah, yeah I, I figured, I, so I called my style quad unity theory, which was simply I traded fundamentals, I traded technicals, I, and I traded quants, and I put a behavioral overlay on top of that. So it sounds like a mouthful, um, but it kind of worked for me and my trading returns are really good. Um, and got me, you know, got me going. Uh, I, I, I've got a, a bit of a background in it. I've got a PhD in behavioral finance. So uh, I'm one of those kind of guys who likes to read a lot. And, mm. you know, if you, and today, in today's world with the internet, it's quite incredible because you've got, you've got information at your fingertips. You can, yeah. you can follow on Twitter and whatever social media, you can hear it from the horse's mouth and I'm a great fan of podcasts uh, um, I'm listening to quite a few at the moment so you can you know you can hear all the way up from Jeff Bezos talking about Amazon you can you can hear what's going on in people's lives and how they go about things so yeah um, that's a bit of my background in yeah. trading I think the opposite side to this the information is the fact that you can be overwhelmed pretty fast by because yeah. there's too many st- too, too many things out there yeah so w- w- which is interesting because that, that actually was the whole philosophy behind Psyquasion. And if I, I can maybe just use that as a, as a slight segue into, yeah, go ahead. into Launchpad into describing Psyquasion. When we, when we started Psyquasion in, in 2016, so let me, we launched it in June 2016. And if I can just, um, the name Psyquasion stands for Psychology and Equation. So my partner, Vladimir Kruglov, who was, is a mathematician, so he handles the equa- in psychosis. I'm the psychology side, and he's the equation side of the partnership. But and we've been working together for nine and a half years. So there's a lot of um, we, we've been collaborating, and we understand each other well. So we, I think, we're quite a, a good team. Um, in terms of how we run the business and what we bring to it, but but you, you you mentioned the word information overload, and that was precisely the point when we launched it. Our dashboard was even more cut back than it is right now. We said, we basically said, less is more. Um, only focus whatever we're going to show you is important stuff. The rest mm. is just noise, and yeah, um, we've evolved somewhat, and we. We're not as purist as we were in the beginning but because people genuinely needed certain bits of information, even we did, and then they would go to another platform for that information and thought, okay, yeah. let's keep it in-house and take away this need to jump around into all these different applications, rather give it, serve it up, but most importantly, focus on, on, on the most important stuff, yes, because we are all buffeted by all this data that's coming through and most of it's not important. True. So you see sure sometimes with like all these tasks and things to look at. Yeah. But it can be very easy too much. Too much stuff yeah. that they don't really need to have. Yeah. So I want you to give people like tell them about what is equation because I've had yeah. my demo recently with Ben who kind of showed me around everything. Yeah. Tell people what it's about and kind of yeah. what they can expect with this. So when we had this black blank canvas in 2006, it was end of 2015, beginning of 2016, we had this blank canvas. What do we want to do? We've come from a, um, a trading background. We've come from an incubation platform. Um, and we've never like specifically built software for the retail trader and what do we want to achieve. When we set out to start our equation, our goal was simply to help traders make more profits and I say help traders make more profits, not, this is no holy grail. We were never setting up equation as some sort of money-making um, platform or software. Our idea was very simple. If you can identify where people make mistakes um, and you can help eliminate those mistakes, by, by default, you'll be more profitable. Mm. You, you, if you're going to lose money, you're still going to lose money. You're going to just lose less. So what I don't believe in is I don't believe there's a holy grail. 
there's no there's no one or well, there's no system that's going to make money continuously and and you've got to understand that i mean th this sounds like i'm talking against trading but I, I one of the things i like to try and emphasize to traders newbies even to people who've been around the block is do you realize that it's how tough this game is it's a zero-sum game to be frank because somebody's winning somebody's losing when you're trading a derivative so um that and then you factor in transaction costs the net the net expectancy for someone who trades forex or futures is that they're going to lose money so you've got to somehow find yourself in the the winning camp and it's difficult. So anyone who tells me they've got, you know, they they can with high degrees of confidence say they're going to make money, um, or they've got a massive edge. This is a very very competitive industry, and you up against the biggest brains, the biggest banks, the big, you know, all people who've got access to information flow that you don't all, all have. So the odds are heavily stacked against you, not to say you can't make money, just got to realize that that your edge is around, is is on the margin, like you, you will only have a slight edge and it's up to you to cultivate that edge yeah. and turn it into profits. And the thing is, if you don't improve, then you kind of fall behind and you cannot become better. Co correct. So I guess I've given you a long answer, but in short, the reason we started Psychoasian was to help traders avoid their mistakes. By that they'll become more profitable and then it, what happened was it was a kind of it, it just evolved as we grew as a business that we had previously incubated traders we we're building all these analytics and people said to us well can't you create some incubation platform again and all that and before we knew it we had investors who wanted to allocate capital to traders and we we now I'd say the best way to describe Psyquasion is twofold. We software for analytics, we analytics for traders, but we're also an incubation platform and very soon we'll be, I know we, I've been saying it for some time, but it, we've been trying to get all the regulatory issues out of the way and, and make a, a great offering where we'll be a copy trading platform or let's say where people can invest in other traders. Um, who've come through our system. And I think one of the, the main differentiators bet between Psyquasion and anyone else is we back everything around our score. So we've got this thing called the Psyquasion score. And before, in our previous company, we, we allocated close to $60 million and it was based on the wrapper score. So I think some of your um, viewers will, will appreciate this kind of thing because I've been there on the other side where you've got to go through all, jump through all these hoops, you go meet with people who are allocators of capital and then do they like you, don't they, do they believe your story, don't they, did you go to the right university, did, you know, are you, whatever, whatever, yeah. did you work at Goldman or Merrill or who's, how, many, how few people have actually done that, so we said let's build something that's a pure meritocracy it's merit-based. We yeah. actually don't care if you went to university or not. We don't care where you worked before. Um, and to a large degree, we don't really care how much money you manage in because we're only interested in one thing, is do you have skill? Or and, and our, We call it skill, another name for it is edge. Can we decipher through our algorithms whether you've got edge and um, how you manage it? You know, what's your risk management like? And if you are somebody that shows that you've got merit, so you've got a score above a certain threshold, we'll allocate money to you. Mm -hmm. And there's no interviews, and um, frankly, your dress code is irrelevant. So as you can see, I'm <laughs> not exactly in the, in the most best dressed, and I didn't shave this morning, so um, you'll forgive me um, if I don't look professional. But Yeah, but I, I think in general that doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah, yeah. For traders, yeah. Correct. So we don't, we're not interested in that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's our differentiator. And we put a lot of value into um, developing this algorithm that measures these different things. So, you know, we're not a team, just two people. We're not just Vlad and myself who both got PhDs, but we've got a team now of 23 people. And we've got a data science uh, team. We've got a database of connected accounts now with over 150,000 
and empty for retail accounts. Well, mm. most of retail, not all. There's some, there's some institutional within there. But the point being is that we've got access to information, we've got access to smarts, and we think we've built a pretty damn good algorithm at measuring the probability of you achieving success in the future. Yeah. And it's no and it's no guarantees. Yeah, but that's just an awesome thing to be able to do, to be able to calculate a score. It's mm-hmm. based on some some numbers of course. Yeah. And predict that that's that's amazing. I think that that's a big thing. So tell me if I'm wrong or if, or, yeah. or if I'm missing a point. But the way it works is that people they connect their accounts yes. on MT4 through this equation. Yeah. Then they will get a score. They have to have like a, of course a track record of like six to twelve month. Uh, so then you, they get a score. No, so um, so you're correct. You any MT4 broker can connect to Sequation. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a strategic partnership with Axie Traders, so we have um, a few extra bits and pieces that, in terms of update speed and yeah. um, access to our, our premium tools, free, etc. Um, but anyone can connect an account, and you need it. Our system needs 30 trades before it will score you. So you could get scored on the first day if you do more than 30 trades. Um, and and then there's a filter, pro, a filter process. So if you want to get into our incubator, you need a score of 75 or more and a track record of six months. Although if you've got a, a lower score but a track record of one year, so if you've got a score of 65 or more and you've got a one year track record, you can get in. And it doesn't matter how big your account is, it's a simple process. We incubate you with $10,000 standard. So, um, and and then there's a progression process from, from incu- we call it the incubator phase. And from there, you will progress to an accelerator phase. Mm-hmm. And so you'll be two months in the incubator, two months in the accelerator. And if you progress, the various steps that you need to progress, uh, or just maintain your score, let's call it that, um, you'll make it into what we call the pro phase. Yeah. And we, we, by the way, we do bump up our allocations to you along the way. Yeah. And, and then if you're in the pro phase, we will then take you to our, we want to take you to our entire audience where people can copy you and we open you up to the broader public. Now that, that's the leg that we haven't implemented as yet due to getting the right regulatory framework, but we've got 15 plus pros and what we think is is going to be really helpful because copy trading or social trading has got a bad rap mm-hmm. uh, and rightfully so. Firstly. A lot of the platforms promote people with the highest return. So you've got a thousand percent return, um, and you'll be at the top of the list, and everyone will in, invest in you, and they'll lose all their money because, um, not to say that you can't. It, it's unlikely to maintain. Normally, if you've made a thousand percent, you've been pretty risky along the way. So yeah. we don't prom- promote that. The, the, the Sequation School's got a risk-adjusted mm-hmm. um, component to it. And not to say we won't allocate to people with really high, high returns, but that's not what we what we promote. And and yeah, um, I mean we we will provide inve- like people who want to copy people with traders who we think have got the best probability of success going forward. So it's kind of like money ball. Um, yeah. We we've been allocated. I think we've allocated to more than 45, 50 people in the year that our incubator has been running. We've had. I think 12 people blow up already, but our program is still positive. We, we're profitable, mm-hmm. and um, and the idea is to spread it across multiple traders because you know the guy with the highest score, there's still a probability he's going to blow up. So you don't mm-hmm. want to put all your money with the top guy. You want to spread it around diversification. For those of you who haven't studied um, finance, um, they they say. If I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm not messing this up now, but Harry Markowitz, the Nobel Prize winner, you know, founded modern portfolio theory, he's, he said the, gr- the greatest um, the greatest asset, in, uh, well, the greatest dis- discovery is, is diversification. That's the one thing that really adds value. You can also, over, without getting too academic, you can also over-diversify and mm. you know, take away the edge from there, but um, yeah, we, we, we believe our platform by filtering 
traders and kind of giving a stamp will, will help other investors who want to get involved have somebody decent to copy. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's very good. And the thing I like about uh, Sequoia is like two things. First of all, you're with a broker, which mm-hmm. means that it's, for me, it feels, it feels more reliable. And the bars of entry are not that big yeah. compared to the platform. Yeah. I've seen places where people they need like fifty thousand dollars in their account to be considered valid. Yeah. Which kind of doesn't make sense. Or places where you have to pay yes. to be able to be like, considered as valid also. Yeah, I mean correct. Um Yeah, we, we, we're not we're not about that. But so I mean there's quite a lot happening on the equation side because we've coming up for our three third year anniversary um, so we, we we got some exciting new tools coming through but if I can just describe some of you know we launched as an alert system mm. so the alerts were telling you where you were making mistakes and we still got those and there's built in alerts and, and you should take note of them when it when it tells you when it alerts you as much as you don't want to hear it it's based on hard facts um, data science where we've got you know, as I said, well over 100,000 accounts where we've been able to see, okay, in those circumstances, it li- it's likely you're going to lose money. Mm-hmm. It's going to lead to losing money. So people who, are, who observe and take note of our alerts do better. And we've yeah. got the stats to prove that, that um, people who've been, if we take a, a blind sample of people who don't use Psyquasion and people who use Psyquasion, people who are using Psyquasion will do a lot better. Um, but we've got a whole bunch of new st- uh, alerts coming in, more um, descriptive statistic-based alerts. So telling you interesting tidbits about your trading relative to like a broader universe. Because often you want to know like, I'm doing this, is it good or bad? Well, we might not say it's good or bad. We might say what you're demonstrating um, is is different to the majority of people who are profitable. So just to give you an example, like a concrete example, there's a thing called the disposition effect. The disposition effect is something where it describes where people cut their winners early and let Mm. their losers run. Now, every academic will tell you disposition effect's bad. Um, Major academic careers have been launched on this notion that disposition effect is bad. I can't tell you how much literature there is on the disposition effect. The interesting thing is, for the last three years we've been researching the disposition effect and we can't tell if it's good or bad. So it just shows you, um, you, you can torture the, do- the data to tell you anything at the end of the day. Um, so maybe it's not a one size shoe fits all. Um, so maybe not, a, not for everyone disposition effect is bad. So what we want to do is say to you, Etienne, this is how you demonstrate the disposition effect, mm-hmm. and for you it's profitable or it's not profitable. And we can demonstrate, and this is a broader group of people who have disposition effect, and this is how, how it behaves. So instead of telling you good or bad, we can just provide you with information that you wouldn't have been on your own. Yeah. And you can do with it as you wish, because some people will be adamant that my strategy um, has got edge and all this kind of stuff, even though I've got disposition effect. Most of those people, by the way, who will be telling you that are martingale traders who are fooled into this mistaken belief that they've got edge, that somebody with no background in trading and understanding of the markets thinks that they can just, because you can trade a micro lot and therefore you can you know, keep doubling up as the markets go against you, you will guaranteed go bankrupt um, trading yeah. the martingale strategy um, not to say that if you've got some smarts on top of that, you can't trade with a martingale, but it's, it's very risky and, and, um, and dangerous. Mm-hmm. So we've also just recently launched a bunch of tools. One of them, for instance, is a thing called OFSI, Order Flow Sentiment Index, and indicator, not index. Um, what, what that's all about is many different brokers or, or let's say, um, sites We'll, we'll show you what the buy and sell is of a large group of traders on, let's take an instrument, the euro dollar. They'll say it's 55% buyers, 45% um, sellers, hence there's an upward bias or, or yeah, there's a, a strong bias to, towards the upside on euro dollar. No one I know has made money trading those that particular um, indicator because who is behind it? So you've got 
10, 15, 50,000, 100,000 people behind that. But you, you've got no understanding who they are. What Psyquasian's done is we've given you the ability to segment that order flow. So because everyone on our platform has an equity curve from their inception, so we are measuring everyone's returns at a high level of, of detail. So we you can, on our on, on our OFSI tool, you can choose, oh, you want anyone to know, you only want to know what are people who are profitable doing or people with a Psyquasian score above 50. And mm -hmm. so you can segment your audience and say, okay, this is the wisdom of the smart crowd. I want to um, follow people who are smart or, or smart being trading well. Um, yeah. um, and that type of thing. So we're trying to give, everything we're trying to do is trying to give people like a, a, an edge that is not currently available to the retail traders. So we were institutional traders back in the day. Um, we've also now got the benefit of a data science team and a whole research capability. We've got a big platform with data and we're very into open sourcing and sharing. Our, our model is is really to, to get as much talent on the platform as possible and give you as many tools that can help you grow and then find capital to allocate to, the, to those top traders. So, so we just want to give the best tools available and, and to utilize our experience and expertise. Um, I mean, we're not altruistic in the sense we're not a charity. We, we make money along the way, but, but um, yeah, that's our, that's our goal. It's awesome. So it's a different platform than what people have seen in most places, I feel. Mm. What can they find out about PsychAsian? So if you just go to our website, psyquation.com, um, I typically write a, a weekly thought piece. Uh, I'm quite provocative often in my, my writing. I, I'm not one to run with the herd. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a contrarian by nature. So, um, But I like to put in stuff there, stuff that traders can think about and take away. And, um, and yeah, we've got a whole bunch of, you know, we try and keep our communication and we try to push everything through the site. And um, while we haven't been the greatest at helping people navigate all the information and the tools on our site, we, we've been focused on delivery and giving you tools and kind of letting you play with them. Yes, as we're growing up and becoming a little bit more mature, not, we're no longer teenage kids. As I said, we're coming up for our third year anniversary. We're putting in walkthrough tours and we're going to be a little bit more focused on educating real newbies um, along the way. Um, yeah, it's we've been like hammering, going, 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 and focusing and building new and kind of just left some stuff in our wake where we mm. didn't polish it and, and make it as user-friendly as I guess some people would like. Um, but yeah, we look at, we're hopefully going to, you know, fix that up. It's awesome. So guys, check it out. We'll put the link below for that if you want to go see the performance of different people and even take the test yourself. Michael, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice and to see uh, you. we'll catch you guys pretty soon.